Did you guys know that there is something threatening some of our stocks right now in the portfolio and more specifically our restaurant stocks? And no, it's not crazy wars. And no, it's not some nuclear bomb potentially hitting the United States. It's actually our own country and some of the crazy principles and laws that are going into effect right now. So if you guys may have seen Gavin Newsom in California essentially signed a bill making the minimum wage for fast food workers $20. Now, whether they actually earn that $20 in whole, that's kind of up for debate. That's something that I've covered in the past. Look at my Starbucks videos. There's a whole playlist on it. But essentially, when you're a kid, you don't grow up and eventually think, I want to be a fast food worker for my entire life. Unfortunately, the state of California is done a crazy increase in minimum wage from $16 to $20, I believe. And I understand the cost of living is ridiculous in California in the first place, and everything's more expensive there. But it's just absolutely wild. So today, we're going to be reacting to some articles, sharing my thoughts, reacting to some news and this will be just a real interesting video. All right, so to start off, we're going to watch a Fox Business video. Governor Gavin Newsom has a little catchphrase he loves to repeat. Quote, as goes California, so goes the rest of the nation. But if that's true, you should be afraid, hella afraid. His own administration admits it's facing a $38 billion budget shortfall. However, I don't think I've met one person that has genuinely said I like Gavin Newsom and some of the policies. Um, the fact that this guy's still in office is kind of mind boggling. Um, he kind of gives the typical creepy predator vibe when you look at a typical like politician, like that meet Kevin kind of vibe. Onto the video, though, regardless. However, the nonpartisan legislative analyst's office says that number could be nearly twice as high. Whoops. And while Newsom loves to brag about how many jobs the Democrats have created over the years, his own state now has the highest unemployment rate in the entire nation at 5.3 percent. And it was dead ass last in job growth for all of 2023. And his new minimum wage hike has only made matters worse. But lying about job creation is just par for the course for these Democrats. By the way, we're going to be watching a CNBC video, too. I know the political bias is wild on this one, so I apologize if you're offended. Don't compare me to the almighty. Compare me to the alternative. <laughs> we added 12 million jobs. That's just counting the lawyers that def defended the president. Quick little fact check. Biden didn't add 12 million jobs. He just added back the jobs that were lost during the pandemic because of the Democrats' lockdowns. So sadly, yes, so goes California, so goes the rest of the nation. I'll be honest, it is pretty petty that Fox is still making this. It's all for all sides, like CNN and Fox. Like, I, I just don't like pointing the finger in one place or the other. You know, it's your fault, it's your fault. I think that's a great way to diversify the country. But we'll get on to Gavin Newsom and the $20 minimum wage here. Right down the tubes. For more on California's minimum wage hike, let's bring in Scott Roderick. He's a board member of on California Alliance of Family Owned Businesses and owns 18 McDonald's restaurants in Northern California. Thank you for joining joining us and uh, congratulations on surviving. So just to keep in mind here, this is somebody that does actually is, you know, invested a lot of their own money into a McDonald's. So they first, you know, firsthand, they're going to be feeling a lot of this pain. There could be some bias here from this guy. Just to, just to keep it in mind, everybody. Living this long in uh, California. Uh, what do you make of these these big proclamations that uh, Democrats and Gavin Newsom have created, all these jobs that, in fact, you created? Well, the, the outcome of the proclamations that have been made now is that 15,000 franchise restaurants throughout the state of California will open for business on Monday, literally walking towards a government buzzsaw. And the vast majority of those restaurants are family owned and operated like my restaurants. I underscore family owned because franchisees are not large global corporations. Our brands might be national, but franchisees are local businesses. So what is happening on April 1st, as you're now reporting, is unprecedented in California, let alone in any state of the union. Yeah, something huge to keep in mind that a lot of these attacks and these minimum wage hikes are attacks against the big corporations, they like to say. But when in reality, it's just a lot of franchisees, a lot of, you know, obviously, as he mentioned, it's the brand, but, you know, it's franchisees and smaller family owned operations that are kind of being impacted by this. And we're going to get to where these costs are really going to affect us um, 
as investors and consumers. Union, we're talking about a massive 25% mandated wage increase targeted solely to fast food employers, yeah. family owned businesses like mine. Yeah, that's a, that's a wild price increase. If you guys thought the dividend data price increase this summer was wild, that's that's kind of up there with it. So simply put, 25% overnight when we open for business on April 1st. The other unprecedented element of this really poorly conceived legislation is that it is so discriminatory by its nature. Politicians in California have literally picked winners and losers with the stroke of a pen. I mean, talk about blowing up an even playing field. From my perspective, I believe that a fair wage for one should be a fair wage for all. And if, if that means if you're an entry level employee working in a retail store, working in agriculture, a teacher's assistant, and yeah, someone who makes Big Macs, a fair wage for one should be a, a fair wage for all. Scott, the th yeah, they're definitely rewarding a lot more. I don't want to say lazy jobs, but a lot more jobs that are very easy to get. If you're starting to pay the person who's an entry level job, the same as somebody who's been working in that field for 10, 15 years, you know, um, that's only bringing income and the wages down for the people who've already been, you know, putting their career and time into that field. So that's somewhere where there's going to be losing money. Thing that I think I can speak for Charlie as well, that we can never get our heads around is that these policies are created by politicians and bureaucrats. And it always seems as if they never actually talk to the business owners and the operators and the families that run these businesses. Something else to keep in mind with this is that there are a lot of minorities and you know people of color that work in these jobs, um, you know, statistically speaking. And a lot of these politicians will love to harp on the fact that they created X amount of jobs for this race or X amount of wage increase or wealth increase for this race. And I think that's something else that a lot of people are overlooking with this. And they are told over and over again, this is what's going to happen if you raise the minimum wage and they do it anyway. And then the layoffs have already started. The, the, the replicate, you're absolutely right, Dagan. The repercussions have already started. While this new legislation goes into effect April 1st, we've literally seen something on the order of 1,500 delivery drivers that work for, for, uh, for Roundtable and Pizza Hut being laid off. There's 18 Subway sandwich shops, family owned, that were operating around my restaurants up in Northern California that closed in the middle of the night at the end of February. So I fear that what is going to happen post April 1st is literally going to be an awful impact to small business owners. And, and sadly, now that the water is under the bridge, because there is no going back to changing the legislation, the best that I can do is not only trying to survive and thrive, because I've been in this business now for 30 years, but perhaps through my experience serve as somewhat of a harbinger, a canary coming out of the coal mine to warn other small business owners around the country that you have to be vigilant, you have to be proactive, you have to be engaged in the political process because only you and your family will be able to protect your hard earned equity and your cash flow. And without cash flow, I can't create jobs and keep jobs in the communities that I do business in. I, I'm assuming you've probably already had some of those conversations with some of your uh, beloved employees. Well, you know, it, I, the number one question that employees have been asking, whether they be in my restaurants or around the cities that I operate in, is what is going to happen to my job? Will my hours be cut? Are you going to close the restaurant? And frankly, given all the choices I have in terms of surviving, let, al let alone thriving post April 1st, the last thing, at least in my organization that I'm thinking about doing, is, is impacting the biggest asset that I have in my restaurants, which are people. I mean, people make hamburgers, people smile to customers, people work in my restaurants, they don't run themselves. And so I'm gonna try to do everything I can to somehow survive. I can't speak to other franchisees. There's literally 15,000 restaurants operated by, I'm guessing something like 2,000 different families throughout the state. They're gonna have to unpack whether they survive through price, uh, being more aggressive in seeking labor efficiencies, making hard choices around CapEx, you know, deferring the HVAC on the top of the roof or asking the landscaper to come every other week instead of every week. Yeah, so essentially this is going to take not only more money out of actually employees, you know, because, you know, there's a good chance that a lot of employees get laid off. There's less hours. 
there's less less of a share to go around now because of this wild price increase. And I understand if you want to gradually do it, but a 25% increase, you know, in literally one day is absolutely insane. And I feel that um, the people who made this law were extremely inconsiderate of the other people that would be impacted. And actually, it's pretty selfish because I can almost guarantee you they're doing this for like the personal like vendetta of having all these new statistics and stuff that, you know, we increase the minimum wage. We're the people's we're the people's politicians. It's actually taking more money away than it is giving what looks all nice. Um, something else that I did want to share is that this is actually, you know, impacting, you know, more people right now. But and on top of what already has gone on, if you look at fast food price inflation, McDonald's has pretty much seen a 100 percent increase in price in 2014. Fast food is not cheap anymore. That was one of the nice things. It was cheap and fast. It is not cheap anymore. If you go to McDonald's, expect to spend, you know, for one person between, you know, 10, 20, 30 dollars and Combine that with inflation as it is right now, that's absolutely wild. Also, the cost of living in California has skyrocketed as well. We can see pretty much, if you want to live in California, 53 genos out of your pocket every year. Absolutely wild, and they have crazy property taxes as well. So we're going to also react to a CNBC video as well. Um, I wanted to give more of a fair share. You know, I understand that Fox is going to be obviously heavily against... um, you know, Gavin Newsom. So we're going to give CNBC a fair chance and we're going to watch our 15 second ad here and help. ...are set to hit $20 an hour in California today after a deal was struck last fall between the unions and the fast food industry. Kate Rogers joins us right now with more on what this means for workers, businesses and consumers in that state. Good morning, Kate. Hi, Becky. Good morning. The minimum will be among the highest in the nation and the sector's highest as of today, with ripple effects sure to be felt for all parties involved in varying ways. Right now, Glassdoor data show that just over 20 percent of California fast food workers are making $20 an hour, so many more will wind up getting a pay raise. There are half a million workers in the sector in California. I sat down exclusively with Mary Kay Henry, SEIU president, who said this model of organizing by sector instead of by business by business will be replicated in the future, mentioning New York, Washington, and Illinois as potential future targets. It's a combination of workers' willingness to strike Mm -hmm. and to lobby legislators and to defend the governor in the recall campaign as the fast food workers did here in California. When those conditions are created in other states, we'll be able to make this same progress. When those conditions are created in other states, not only are millions of Americans who are invested into these businesses going to be impacted, um, the people who actually own the business are going to be impacted. The consumers are going to be impacted because they're going to have to pay more. The farmers are going to be impacted. Everybody in this is going to be impacted. Even the people who are getting the price increase, the cost of living for them is going to go higher because there's more money being put around. Inflation is going to be a, a impacted. This, I, I just cannot justify this. The hike may also lift wages for low-wage workers who are outside of the restaurant sector. Business owners like Jennifer B. Perez, who runs Growing Roots, a plant design and maintenance company in Long Beach, are closely monitoring the increase in order to remain competitive. It's a ripple effect because I'm not part of that industry, but of course I'm actually looking at all of that as well. Cause like I said, I've always haven't worried about it too much. Cause I was like, Oh, I'm always over minimum wage. But since that keeps increasing and increasing and like that's a 25% increase from 16 to 20. Her lowest paid worker is at $19 an hour. And she has to be wary of further price increases for her customers. She says to Becky back over to you. I mean, I, Kate, that's really the issue here are, I've been calling them unintended consequences. Perhaps in the case of the unions, these are intended consequences, uh, but it, it, it really creates all kinds of unknown potential changes and how that ripples through not just related industries, but completely unrelated industries. How do you find workers in any of those other industries? Earlier this morning, we were talking about whether that be home health care aides, therapists, mm-hmm. uh, whether that be aides in schools, and a lot of those people who are caring for the elderly. I mean, those are some of our most vulnerable populations, and these wages are not going to far outstrip those wages. What, what happens in the meantime? It's, it's going to be pretty chaotic. 
It really will be, Becky. And I went to Seattle and we did a big story on this several years ago, because if you remember, they raised to $15 an hour, which was very high at the time. And different studies over the course of several years after had different findings, right? Some low wage workers had their hours cut, but then it did wind up giving them a nice economic boost. And depending on how you surveyed people, you got different findings there. So it's going to be a very interesting study to see here in California. And as you heard the SEIU president, they are looking to do this in other states because this was called kind of a back doorway of unionizing, uh, doing it by sector, right? Not by individual business. So it's going to be a fascinating right. thing to follow. What's different about this too, though, is this is an overnight rate hike of 25% versus doing mm -hmm. it stair step as that's traditionally yep. done when you start to raise minimum wages to allow things to settle in instead of having this overnight like kind of crazy change. So it's going to be really interesting to see what happens. Um, I will be impacted by this most likely, not only as a consumer, prices are probably going to go up for me. I want to shop at McDonald's in the next few years. Not going to be pretty for your boy, which is why you smash the like button, buy my merch, and give me money because I'm not going to have any money to buy groceries or anything now. Um, I want to thank you all for making it to the video. I'm going to be out, so impact as an investor with McDonald's, Starbucks, and Texas Roadhouse. So I think McDonald's is probably going to be most impacted by that. Starbucks, I also think, does have a good amount of stores in California. Texas Roadhouse, I'm not too sure because they're relatively smaller. So Mickey D's maybe goes on a nice dip. We'll look to buy some more. It's unfortunate what's going on. Um, I think it's pretty selfish by the politicians and all the stuff that I mentioned in today's video. All right. Thank you guys for watching. Smash like button, subscribe, and do dividend stocks on drugs. Have a good one.